Hi guys and welcome to the channel. In this week's video I'm going to be having a look at this Yamaha DGX 640 electric piano. I've got a problem with it, I can't get any sound to come out of it. Um, I've tried all the obvious things but still nothing so I'm going to have to strip it apart and have a look inside to see if we can find what the problem is. So I thought I'd make this video about it, um, hopefully we can get it fixed and then it should help you fix yours if you have the same problem. So first of all let me show you the symptoms of this fault then. We turn the piano on, we've got power to the display, our volume is on max but we've got no sound coming out of it. So you want to make sure the volume is on max. If we go to the function setting here, our style volume, let's turn that up. Let's go through the categories and just make sure anything with volume on it is turned up. Main volume is up. Let's turn it all up just to make sure it's nothing silly in this. We can also give it a factory reset. I'll show you how to do that now. Just a pre-warning about doing a factory reset. If you've saved anything in any of these channels, you will lose that. So this is how to do a factory reset. Turn it off, hold the highest key, and then turn it on again. It will say backup clearing, and that's taking it back to factory settings. So once that's loaded up, and you still haven't got sound, we know the problem lies within. One last thing to check for before you start taking it apart is that you haven't forgotten to remove this adapter from the headphone port. It's easily overlooked um, and that will stop sound coming out of the speakers. I think we've managed to rule out anything obvious. If we turn it on, we've checked the volume is on maximum. We've checked the internal volume settings in the functions menu. We've given it a factory reset and checked the headphone port to make sure we haven't got any adapters left in there. So the only option now is to take it apart and see if we can find out what's wrong with this. I've disconnected the power cable, so let's flip this over and start taking it apart. So we've got loads and loads of screws underneath here. I'm just gonna take off this plastic edging strip first. So to speed things up, I'm gonna be using my impact gun. Let's take out all these screws. Got a little pot here for the screws to keep them all together. Okay, with all the screws taken out this edge plastic piece, this is the first piece that comes off. Let's take that off. Then this piece comes off, this is a screw as well. That piece comes out. Now I think it should be alright to take all these screws out without the keys falling out, but um, we'll soon find out. What is it? MDF panel. Lifts up and you can actually just flip this over. One plug to disconnect the speakers. Take that out. And then this whole section comes off. That's the piano opened up, let's have a look inside. I've disconnected the speakers, which were plugged in here. This is the main PCB. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because all the display and everything works fine. And then here, it looks like our amplifier board because we've got our speakers connected here. We've got our volume control connected here. Uh, and this is the on off switch. There's lots of capacitors on here and capacitors degrade over time, so that could be what the problem is. I want to take this board out and do a bit of fault finding on this. Long nose pliers, I just want to carefully disconnect all these plugs. Just pull that up, pull that out. Really easy to disconnect these. That's for the tweeter over that side. Positive is purple. I want to try and disconnect this ribbon. Do that in a second. Let's get to take this one out. This ribbon here, I'm just going to really carefully give it a pull. Like that. And that's everything disconnected. I've just got to unscrew it and then we can take it out. So 
and that's it the board should come out now i can't take credit for finding this as i've done a little bit of research um it's always worth doing as someone's probably been here before you already and what i found is that these two capacitors here in particular c207 can be problematic there's nothing obvious none of these capacitors have blown out if your capacitor is bad they usually pop at the top but they all look all right so i'm going to use my multimeter here on the capacitance setting as you can see it's measuring farads this has got an auto range so it will pick up whatever it is i'm just going to measure them while they're in the board our readings won't be accurate because they'll be measuring the other capacitors in the same circuit um but it will give us an idea whether there's something wrong with these capacitors capacitor's got a black line down it that's the negative side so i want to find this on the back of the board one two three four that one c207 see what we get there it's not picking up anything what about c208 let's try that one the one above it 110 microfarads so yeah it's c207 by the looks of it showing open circuit I think if we replace that capacitor, we should be in business. The capacitor is turned up today, so I'm going to swap out that capacitor on the board and I'll show you how to do that. This is my soldering iron kit and I got this off of Amazon if you want to get one yourself. It's got everything you need in it. Um, solder sucker, soldering iron with various nibs, tweezers, solder, a little stand for it with a sponge. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You've got these different angled tips for doing different things. Really fine one there. Okay, so the capacitor C207 is this one here, I believe. So I'm going to heat that up and use a solder sucker to suck up the, uh, the molten solder. Um, and then the components should just come out. So I'll show you that now. So in one hand, I've got my soldering iron. And in the other hand, I've got my solder sucker. And I'm literally going to touch this on here to heat up the solder and melt it. And then I'll push the button to suck it out. Like that. And then as you can see, it's sucked out the solder from that joint there. I'll do the same on this one. Melt the solder. So now I'm just going to heat this up a little bit more and try and wiggle the capacitor out. Get some little pliers and straighten that out. That's it. From the board. I'm now going to show you how to measure a capacitor to see if it's good or bad using a digital multimeter. So first of all, you need to make sure that your multimeter can measure capacitance and the symbol for it looks like this, the capacitance symbol. So I'm gonna put my multimeter to this setting. I have to push the yellow button to change it over. Now that's measuring microfarads um, or nanofarads. It's an auto ranging multimeter, so it will measure whatever it is um, it's reading. Now I'm going to discharge a capacitor and to do that I just put my test probe across both the terminals and that will discharge it. If we have a look at the capacitor it's got a negative side. This leg here is negative because it's got this black line on the capacitor. So I'm going to put my test probe on there and on the other side and measure across that. And as you can see it's showing open line so we know we've got a faulty capacitor here. I will now measure across this good capacitor to show you what it should look like. 107 microfarads, and this is an 100 microfarad capacitor, so it's well within range. It's usually, um, if it is below 10% of what it should be, then it's a bad capacitor. It's really easy to solder this into the board, so all you have to do is get your component, make sure you've got the negative side in the right hole,
bend the legs over like that. And get some little snips. You just snip off the excess. Fairly confident that that should have fixed a problem, hopefully. Let's put this board back in and test it out. Doesn't get much easier than that. Push this one. In there, and that's it. We're all connected up. That one tiny capacitor there causing all the problems. So I'm really glad that's fixed. We can put it back together and give it a play. My sustain pedal is not really working, so apologies. Um, but here we go, I'm going to play you a little song now that's on the public domain so I don't get in trouble for copyright. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you found this one useful and you've learned something from it. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed, that'd be fantastic. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, bye for now.